millions and millions of years ago, well, maybe not millions, but from many hundreds going back to thousands of years, there was a group of really clever indigenous people in South America. And what they were doing has arguably revolutionized soil health and soil remediation because what they were doing was going around and burning woodlands. Well, actually, that's not necessarily a great thing by today's standards, but then it was quite pioneering because what they ended up producing gave them the means to produce bigger quantities of foods that were really great for their diet and would propel their population through to the next stage of evolution. But what was it that they created? Well, the black material that we now know as biochar was the key to their success. And today we're going to look at what is biochar. We're less concerned about the does it work or doesn't it because there is still a lot of misunderstanding about what it actually is. So the topic of this video, what is biochar? Okay, so before we get stuck properly into this, what does biochar actually look like? Well, let's have a closer inspection. And this is it. You can see that in essence, this particular biochar is fragments of wood that has been turned into the material. Now, biochar differs dependent on what's used and the size that it's kind of sieved or graded to. We'll talk about that a little bit more in a minute. But basically, it looks like black charcoal. And if you're not careful, it will stain your hands. So that is biochar. Now, if you stay tuned through the video, I'm going to drop a tip about biochar, which could be useful for other areas of your healthy lifestyle. I'll put some bells and whistles up so you know what I'm talking about when it occurs, but let's get back to it. So the name biochar is a bit of a giveaway. If we break it down, bio means organic material in this sense. Char, charcoal as I've explained with what it looks like. So to make biochar we need to take organic materials and turn them into charcoal. Now could you just take the ashes or embers that have cooled down from your fire and pour them around a plant? You could, um, it's probably not going to do them a great deal of good and that's for a number of reasons, not least Generally, there's a lot of rubbish gets burnt these days or put into materials for burning. I know they're trying to crack down on this in some countries, but the resultant product you're left with could actually contain particular nasties, including things like heavy metals, which you don't really want to introduce around your plants because ultimately you're going to eat those things. They don't degrade. So a pure material, virgin wood, is a classic uh, example of a high quality material used for biochar but actually it extends as far as using things like even grass clippings so it needs to be naturally occurring organic material that feeds the process and the process the char bit is all about pyrolysis this means loading that material into a kiln heating it at anywhere upwards of four or five hundred degrees C. I uh, don't know what that is in Fahrenheit for you guys elsewhere in the world, but pretty high temperatures. The key thing here is to do that without oxygen. So you're burning the material, you're combusting it in the absence of oxygen. And the resultant product is a charcoal. And this brings us on to the second point, the context in which it's intended for use. Now, the application of this material is key really to the definition because what a lot of people don't necessarily understand is that biochar could in fact be the same material that you burn on your barbecue. Or, here's a tip for you, you could even use to filter drinking water. That is, of course, provided that the material that fed that process was uncontaminated, was as high quality as possible. So the two 
charcoal for uh, burning lump wood charcoal for a, a barbecue could in fact be exactly the same material that you use to add fertility to your soil or add beneficial characteristics. So it's all about how it is intended for use. Some people think that actually there's a far more uh, lot to it. In fact, a lot of manufacturers of biochar will add other ingredients. They will add value to it. So they often add microbes or perhaps uh, other naturally occurring nutritional products alongside it. Uh, I myself don't necessarily like to go that route because you don't necessarily know about the quality of those other ingredients. And when you're trying to establish is it beneficial or not, those could actually hinder that kind of analysis because you don't know whether it's the beneficial products that have been added to the biochar or whether it's the biochar itself. So the context of use is very key as well. Basically, once you've produced something using high quality organic materials at a set temperature and pressure for a known period of time in the absence of oxygen, what you do with that material at the end of it, how you handle it, how you then go and use it, really is the last point in that chain of determining is it biochar or is it something else. Now, is biochar any good for your plants or crops? Well, that's a huge subject and if you guys are interested in it, I've kind of earmarked this as potentially another trial that I'll do in the future. I will have a look at it, but I'd like your feedback on if you think that would be useful. So let me know in the comments or drop me a line on email. That wraps this video up for now. So until the next one, goodbye.